Bring in now Congressman Adam Schiff, a California Democrat who is a member of the January 6th committee. Good evening, Congressman. Thank you so much for joining. Good to be with you. I want to get uh, to the content of today's hearing with you. But, but first, we've, we obtained a new clip, an outtake from the raw footage from the Discovery Plus Trump documentary. It is of Ivanka Trump in mid-December 2020. Watch this. I think that, as the president has said, every single vote needs to be counted and needs to be heard. And he campaigned for the voiceless. And I think a lot of Americans feel very, very disenfranchised right now um, and really question the sanctity of our elections. And, uh, and that's not right. It's not acceptable. And um, he has to take on this fight. Look, you fight for what you love the most, and, and he loves this country, and he loves this country's people. And, um, and he wants to make sure that, that their voice is, is heard um, and, and not muted, and will continue to fight um, until every legal remedy is exhausted, and, and that's what he should do. So Alex Holder, the documentary filmmaker who testified behind closed doors this morning, told me that this was a big focus of his questioning today. What does this raw footage reveal to you, and what did the committee want to know about it from Holder? Well, it, it, what it says to me is, here is Ivanka basically parroting her father uh, in the same way that Donald Trump would say, you know, a lot of people are questioning the election. Well, yeah, they're questioning it because you've been lying about it. Uh, she goes on to say that, uh, you know, he's fighting for what uh, he loves most. Yeah, he was, which was Donald Trump, uh, which is what he loves most, uh, not the country. And as these top Justice Department people pointed out uh, so graphically today, what he was fighting for them to do was violate their oath of office, ignore the Constitution, write this uh, fictitious, uh, fraudulent letter to Georgia saying that we're concerned about fraud and suggesting that maybe they should call their legislature back into session. And he was going to have these letters sent out to other states as well. And it took the threat of mass resignations, uh, you know, 100 or 150 top lawyers around the country resigning to get the president to stop. Uh, and I think Evan Perez is exactly right. It, it showed us just how close we came to, to constitutional collapse. I want to compare that to, um, to what Ivanka said, what she told your committee under oath. OK, here it is. I respect Attorney General Barr. Um, so I accepted what he said, was saying. Barr had given that assessment, she claims, she believed on December 1st of 2020, and yet in mid-December, she was saying things that appear to be contradictory. What is the significance of that to your committee? Well, I would need to see the full uh, tape of the interview done by the British uh, uh, documentary filmmaker uh, before I could really say, but, you know, certainly on the basis of that excerpt, uh, she appears to be saying one thing under oath uh, and another thing for public consumption. And, you know, sadly, this is also a Trump family story uh, of, uh, you know, uh, telling one thing publicly, another thing privately. And here we we get uh, maybe the truth uh, under oath, but uh, but very difficult to tell. Does it matter that she told the truth under oath from a legal perspective? Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, there's no jeopardy to her uh, in lying lying to a British filmmaker, if she was lying to that filmmaker, uh, lying under oath uh, exposes you to criminal penalties. So there's a far stronger incentive to be truthful uh, when you're testifying before Congress. Yeah, you can lie to the press. People do it all the time, sadly, but you cannot lie to Congress and officials, right, especially if you're under oath. Um, let's move on to the pardons that the committee says that your colleagues asked for. Gates, Brooks, Biggs, Gomert, Perry, possibly Marjorie Taylor Greene, too. <laughs> What does it say to, that, that they are asking for pardons, Congressman? Well, I, I mean, think of how unprecedented this is. I, I've been in Congress for 20 years. I've never seen anything like it, where you have multiple members of Congress seeking a pardon from the administration for their role in something. And of course, here, their role was in a plot to overturn the election. Uh, it, it clearly shows a consciousness of guilt uh, and a fear of, of criminal liability. I mean, that's why you would seek a pardon. Uh, and that's really just another shock to the system 
uh, particularly when so many of them appear to have denied it. There was a search yesterday at Jeffrey Clark's residence. Does your committee have any information that could aid the DOJ in their investigation? Well, I'm sure that we have information that the department would be interested in, and and we are in dialogue with the department about how to share that information and what uh, particular information they really need. Um, they did make a pretty unprecedented request of just basically open your files to us, uh, which is not what's done. Uh, I've been involved in several high-profile congressional investigations that ran concurrently with DOJ investigations, and they've never said, just give us your files, nor have we said, open up your files completely to the Congress. But we'll make sure that they get what they need. Uh, we want them, obviously, to be successful in holding people to count and bringing them to justice. Uh, so uh, I think our our goals are aligned, and that is we all want accountability. Yeah. So listen, people think that may, the Justice Department and the Congress, that you guys are in cahoots, but the Justice Department has asked for you to open up and give them everything that you have and you have denied? Well, you know, we've said, look, we'll work with you, uh, but you're going to have to be specific about what you need and give us some sense of why you need it. Uh, that's traditionally how this process of accommodation has worked. Uh, and uh, and the Justice Department should be able to do that. So I'm confident we'll work this out. But it was pretty breathtaking to have that initial request come in and say, just basically give us everything. Your next hearing has been pushed to July. Your colleague Jamie Raskin says that the committee has gotten a deluge of new evidence. Can you characterize the type of information you are getting? What does it pertain to? Well, you know, the reality is we continue to get new information, uh, you know, pretty much every day, sometimes every week. Uh, it's uh, really aided in our investigation, although it does present a challenge because uh, you start preparing for a hearing and, and then suddenly you get some new additional information and uh, you need to figure out how to make sure to incorporate the most important things. Uh, but it's a nice problem to have. Uh, you know, we've been very lucky to have lots of people cooperate uh, like these three senior Republican Justice Department officials uh, and those who are not cooperating, uh, the Cipollonis and others really stand out for their unwillingness to, to do the patriotic thing that we see other people doing. Congressman, thank you so much. appreciate your time. I know you're very busy. Thank you. Thank you.